Okay, uh, today I am going to make a bow again. Um, this time I'm going to alter the rim a little bit to make the bow a little bit interesting. And uh, it's the same process as making bow, making a nicer bow. And the very final stage, just change the um, the rim, alter the rim, so it will be uh, different. I'm still uh, making, uh, shooting the uh, video from the top. So you will see uh, where is my hand, especially on the inside. So this time I am using my left hand drill and the right hand, the right thumb is helping it. And I always brace my uh, fingers together while I'm doing all my uh, action, brazing together to stabilize it. Keep on drilling it, and you can see that I, when I drill, I don't curve my fingers. I basically using the pad, this part here, to uh, to compress to push down. So especially for making the ball, uh, you wanna make the inside a little bit of a, a curve instead of a straight line. So the pad is very uh, very useful. Like this pad. And then um, slightly uh, widen it once I reach the right thickness. Make it a little bit wider. Again, I'm still using my left hand to uh, pinch it. And make sure it, it is slippery before the next move. Especially making bow, uh, the inside dried out really fast, so you have to uh, really lubricate it. And for the outside here, uh, from this angle, uh, you see that there's still uh, quite a, a bit of uh, clay here in the corner. Um, if you don't uh, squeeze it up, you're going to waste that clay here in the corner, so I'm going to uh, just squeeze it using my right fingertips to do that and you can see from that camera and then uh, squeeze the clay Slowly but surely. Then put the slip back to work and if you have slip in the inside you can grab the slip and then coat it on the inside of the wall. That take care of the inside and then uh, a little bit of water. I'm 
and you can see that I just uh, dip my uh, finger in the bucket. I don't use a, a sponge to squeeze a lot of water because the water doesn't uh, usually stick on the surface. So just get enough water and uh, combine with the slip. You will make the uh, surface slippery. Okay, and then this will be my final lifting. Um, here, in the, from the middle to the top, this part is is thin already, so I don't want to uh, stretch too much or pull too much. But on the bottom corner, I still have a bit of a clay, so I will focus more on the bottom, less pressure on the top. Right, and then um, I'm ripping outside first. So the inside hand slightly uh, pushed down, and the outside hand slightly bending the metal rib to form a curve, and then uh, slightly push. the clay wall onto my outside rib. Rib is just holding it. For the outside rib, you don't need to use a lot of a pressure. Okay, just holding it. And then push that gradually. Push the wall on the rib. Gonna do one more time. Okay, so that take care of the outside, and now um, I'm going to take care of the inside. You see that the uh, this corner here usually, I guess the bottom you have a clay, so there's a little. Sometimes you can come with a little bump there, so you, if you wanted the whole curve to follow through, the bump you need to take care of it, okay, and I will show you uh, how I do it. But before I do that. I actually chop up the clay on the bottom so when I'm pushing it there's no clay in the way. I'm, I'm using the wooden knife on um, usually the uh, if you go to the uh, uh, share studio, the knife, especially when it comes to uh, the basic kit, the knife is kind of dull, okay? This part is not sharp. So for me, I like to have a really sharp uh, knife while I'm cutting it. So I just use a, a sandpaper, just put it on the table and just send it to sharpen it. So it, when I'm cutting it, it's just like a knife is cutting through. So. Uh, this might be a little uh, a tip for you. Just use the same paper, you can set it down so the, the edge is very sharp. And then uh, I'm using my number 10 cutting knife because this is very, uh, very thin blade of a knife, very thin. So uh, when I'm going under, I don't tend to push that the clay back to stick on to the pot because it's thin. So you have to hold it very more the, the horizontal, but better. So just 
Just go underneath and then uh, undercut it. And once you cut out the whole circle around, you should be able to separate easily. Right, so that's how you uh, cut the uh, extra clay off. And now I'm going to take care of that corner I just told you. Um, depending on the, the size of, uh, uh, I usually use my, my rib. This is very uh, useful rib to uh, compress it. And I have uh, uh, several different sizes, three, four, and five inches. And this size of a bowl, probably I would just use the four inches. If I have a larger one, I would use the large rib. So the rib has the three holes, so my fingers fit in there easily, nicely. Um, dip it in the water. And just hold it on. Concentrate on that corner I just told you. And then you can start from the very center and slowly bring the rib up. Remove that slip and then uh, go again. And while you are using this wooden rib okay so the rib if you hold more vertical you are going to have a smaller curve but if you tip over then your the curve is getting shallow and shallow so when you hold it like that okay you can actually compress a, a, a platter platter okay a platter so that way or that way is depending on how uh, what you what is your curve you like to achieve? So I usually start with the more vertical and then once I move to the side, I kind of uh, make it more horizontal. So it's more, more shallow. That curve here is more shallow. And then slowly go up. And I don't need to go all the way. I just want to connect the uh, curve all the way through. And here I can use my hand to uh, bring it. So you don't need to go all the way. Okay. Let me uh, get the sponge and uh, wipe up the water. So you will see it inside better. Now, uh, from the top view, you can see that this curve is more followed through from the very center all the way to the top. But when I'm using the uh, sponge or using the wooden rib, there's some texture from either the sponge or the, the uh, uh, wooden rib. So usually I like to remove it. So I'm using the metal rib to do that. You, you might have some kind of uh, other uh, people that making a nicer curve. You might, you might be able to use that, okay. But uh, I don't have that, so I just use the uh, metal. This is come with the uh, basic kit. Slide the depending the rib, and then uh, from the almost the very center, and then slowly. Move up slowly. So remove the slip. See that slip? I just scrape it up from the surface. I do it one more time. Um, I should be able to uh, to make the holes uh, curves follow the rule. The very center point, I can use my thumb to just take care of it a little bit. And then uh, maybe a quarter of inch away from the very center because uh, this is very sharp. So you might, uh, if you cross over the center point by accident, that rib is going to gouge in and then you will have a cut there. So always start from the quarter inch away from the very center. 
and slightly depending the rib, feeding the curve and just let it follow through. Okay, so nice curve in the center now. And then I'm gonna open up uh, uh, the rib a little bit, so I will use a, uh, a chamois to do that. First compress it, and then I kind of, kind of move it outward, kind of bend it. So the rib become a little bit wider. Because I told you that I would uh, alter the rim a bit. Okay, so that's the uh, the bowl that uh, I formed it, and then uh, I wanted the altar, uh, maybe a six sided. I would uh, squeeze it in, so to be able to find a nice equal part, uh, I usually find from my uh, my bed there's uh, uh, the pinholes, so the upper side is that is in the hundred eighty degrees. And then uh, at that, you will find that from here to here. So kind of uh, eyeball it, okay? You don't need to have, you don't need to do it exactly. Just eyeball it, okay? So that's the uh, two equal parts, three equal parts now. And then turn it over here again. Just eyeball it. Before you uh, come, uh, push, squeeze, Alter the rim, you can still uh, adjust it. So just give yourself an idea that the uh, six equal parts. And then um, I will uh, just use the, the same rib, use the edge of the rib. Okay, just push. Okay, so I will start uh, from the pin here. Okay, so the pin is right here. So I'm going to uh, push it in. But when you push, you might want to put the finger, two fingers to support it, okay? So you can split two fingers, same level, okay? Two fingers, not the same level, but one you can curve more like that, okay? So more support here. And then split up uh, your fingers and then squeeze it, okay? And if you like, you can clean up that. Okay, and then I'll do the other side, upper side, and then do it again. This one here and there. Okay, so I make the uh, rim uh, six wave like a flower. Okay, six petal. Uh, so I just alter a little bit uh, to make it look more interesting. And uh, the uh, finger mark you can clean up later on. Right now, just leave it alone. Don't you don't need to touch it. But once the uh, surface is a little bit uh, firmer. Uh, you can run the sponge over, just smooth the uh, finger mark. 
Okay. Um, and I usually like to uh, clean up my bed before I remove it. Clean up. And uh, from the top view, you can see uh, I barely have water in my splash pan. My splash pan is dry. It's it's dry. Okay. So you want to use the water efficient. Yeah. That is the uh, important part. Uh, you don't use uh, waste a lot of water. Water is going. Water doesn't stick on the surface. Going to the drain here. So use the water efficiently. That's the key. All right. Uh, hope this help. Uh, I know a lot of people like to do, uh, do bowls and uh, you, if you are tired of uh, getting all the same look, the circular shape, you can alter a little bit. Okay.